voices of the underground coming on the rebound. Lisa, Jane, Gina, Catherine, Yasmin, Naomi, voices of the underground coming on the rebound. Yeah, we got voices. We got voices. Hi, and welcome to Poetry Live, Voices of the Underground. Six episodes featuring six dynamic women spanning several generations of poets. And this episode, we feature a poet who is a hiker. And I must tell you, nature is her muse. Hmm. I heard you are quite adventure. Excuse me, and where did you hear that? I have my sources. Uh, well, according to my sources, <laughs> you were supposed to be interviewing the poet, but you were in her backyard volleying her mangoes. What? That's, That's exactly what I heard. You see that bag eye freeness thing? That is not true. I got permission. Hello. Permission or no permission? We'll discuss that after we take this short break. Voices of the underground coming on the rebound. Select's Rodney Bay office is now open, but we are still available to serve you remotely. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-6796, 285-7859, 285-3593, or 285-3329. Or send an email to customer support at lucilec.com for assistance. Call 457 4433 to get bill balances. Use our free online service at myaccount.lucilec.com for detailed account information and online bill payments through your bank. Customers may also take advantage of Shopee's online or walk in service. Lucilec encourages you to practice social distancing. Stay home, stay safe. Souvenirs at Island Gallery Shops, local cuisine at Oasis Food Court. Come upstairs, walk the strip for the best services at your fingertips. Caribbean Rum Shack, Perfumery, and more. At the JQ Rodney Bay Mall, we've got it all. Shopping design with you in mind. You are too funny. You're using this protocol thing to your advantage. That's not fair. Anyway, I'm gonna let you off the hook with that whole mango situation, okay? We are currently on Jeremy Street, named after Chief Justice Sir John Jeremy of European descent, a judge during the period of 1825 to 1831. He was also a legislator and quite a controversial character. Controversial? Yes, the controversial based on the fact that, according to my research, he brought cases against people who mistreated slaves. Something about that is a little unnerving. Listen, I'm just giving the red pill. The red pill? Your Matrix fan? I thought you were muzzled. <laughs> Lord Cote, moving right along. It's time to introduce strategy and triumph. Dorothy Parker was an American poet who chose activism over personal and social life. Dorothy Parker was a great American writer, poet, critic, and satirist, but even more so, she repeatedly chose activism over her personal life and social belonging. Parker was born in West End, New Jersey on August 22nd in 1893 to J. Henry and Elizabeth Rothschild. However, her mother died in 1898. Following this, she attended Miss Danner's school in Morristown, New Jersey. It is there that she began to explore her interest in the world of poetry. After school, she moved to New York City. In 1916, she caught her big break when the editor of Vanity Fair accepted one of her poems and later hired her as a theatre critic in 1918. At the start of her career, she became well known for her dry humour and harsh critiques. During the 1920s, she published about 300 poems while simultaneously falling into depression, alcohol addiction and suicide attempts. 
she often opened up about her dark thoughts in poems, such as Resume from her first collection, Enough Rope. In the 1940s, she fought for many current and pressing issues, such as civil rights and civil liberation, anti fascism, and compassion towards refugees. Parker died on June 7, 1967, and left her estate to civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., which is given to the NAACP after his assassination. Dorothy Parker, a talented writer who, despite the tragedy in her life, will always be remembered for her literary achievements, unmatched humor, and powerful activism. We got voices, yeah. If you are to compare Dorothy and Catherine, you would say that they have the same underlying passion in their work. I would say yes. Catherine's creative process is fascinating. And having spent some time with her, I can say that she is passionate about many things. Hanson, I believe that musicians such as Michael Robinson express so much passion in their music, that fiery and intimate language expressed in R&B music. Let's analyze one of his songs, Living Life. In this song, it is full of the literary device, alliteration. I'm living life tonight. I'm li this song celebrates a life of freedom and relaxation with friends in the open, enjoying nature. The use of alliteration with emphasis on the lateral sound of the letter L in the hook phrase and title of the song enforces the concept of existing in the moment. A prime example of this is a repetition of the phrase, live in life, lose control, no worries. Freedom from the daily rigors of life is highlighted by the repeated phrase, so free. A popular St. Lucian saying is also repeated, who jobless, no man curse, to indicate that truly this type of life advocated by the song is a blessing. The song emphasizes a positive outlook on life by saying, this song is for winners, so live life to the fullest. Doesn't get any better than this. Impersonating Michael Emma, Robinson. Emma, 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 Emma. It's time for Emma, a break. Emma, <laughs> we'll be Emma, right Emma. Voices from the underground. Coming on the rebound. Blue Select's Brami Bay office is now open, but we are still available to serve you remotely. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-6796. 285-7859, 285-3593, or 285-3329. Or send an email to customer support at lucilec.com for assistance. Call 457-4433 to get bill balances. Use our free online service at myaccount.lucilec.com for detailed account information and online bill payments through your bank. Customers may also take advantage of Shopee's online or walk-in service. Lucilec encourages you to practice social distancing. Stay home, stay safe. CDF is both a champion for cultural preservation and development change agents. Established in April 2002 by the CDF Act of 2000 as the agency responsible to align the aspirations of cultural and creative individuals, groups, communities, policymakers, and civil society through the implementation of the National Cultural Policy of St. Lucia, 
we envision a strong, united and proud St. Lucian community empowered by culture and creativity. For more information on how you can partner with CDF on some of our projects and efforts, go to cdfstlucian.org or contact Cultural Development Foundation Barnard Hill Catstreets, PO Box CP5405, call us at 457-9021 or send us a fax at 459-0615. Email us at info at cdfstlucia.org. One, two, my check. We're back. I would have gotten your coconut, but I wasn't sure you wanted one. Well, it would seem to me that chivalry's dead in downtown Castries. It's absolutely fine. I can guarantee you I can probably get coconuts from one of these hard-working women who I'm sure have been up from since 3, 4 o'clock in the morning organizing their produce to be able to sell and provide for their families. It's now time for Ordinary Women with Extraordinary Talent, an interview with Katherine Atkinson. Thank you. So we've just come down Mount Hardy in the back of Cap Estate, yes, yes. Um, accompanied by your faithful Mercy. Yes. And I'm thinking to myself, who is Catherine Atkinson? Well, uh, Tracy, I think it depends on which Catherine you encounter on any given day. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, right now, I suppose I'm in a, a creative space. So I think of myself as a creative, as a writer, but I also, you know, feel very strongly sometimes that I am a teacher. I really enjoy teaching and that's a strong part of my identity. Come on, Mercy. Come on, girl. Here. Yeah. So reach the spot. Yes. Why this spot, Catherine? Uh, well, you know, I mean, look, look at it. <laughs> it's, um, it's a way, it's quiet. I can hear my thoughts. Um, I'm right in the middle of, of the, the elements, you know? I mean, there's the wind buffeting the cliffs, there's the sound of the roaring ocean, there's a scrabble in the, the sort of starkness of the landscape, and uh, it, just, it just feels so free. I feel free. Like, a lot of my work is quite observational and arises from, like, meditations on landscape and so on. And even, even in my more character-driven work, what's happening is they are situated um, in a, specific, a very specific landscape. I mean, I walk all along this area, this coast, and there are many little special spots and so on, but yeah. They, we live on a beautiful island. We live on a beautiful island, we really do. And it's hard not to be inspired. You know? So is there anything special that you do that would inspire you to write poems like Good Friday and VG Beach? If you look at those selections, you'll see, just like I said, that they're, they're mostly observational. They're like about the landscape. And the landscape sometimes is peopled and sometimes it's, it's bare. So when did you see yourself as a writer? You know, I. I've been asked that question before and I hesitate over it because, well, to start off, when I was younger, there were moments when I thought I was a writer, like when I was a teenager and I was writing those desperate love poems, in a diary, you yes. know, in my diary yes, and so on. Yes. And I wanted to be a writer and there was this, this idea of the writerly self and so on. But where I'm at right now is, is, is interestingly freeing me up to commit to my writing practice even more. To stop calling myself a writer, and uh, because, because writer is like a static thing, right? Yes. But, but you're a writer when you're writing. So I'm a writer when I'm writing. And when I'm not writing, I'm a teacher, I'm a friend, I'm a what Different have you. Sides. Yes. I feel like a lot of creative people find it difficult to balance their passion with their nine to five. Mm. So how do you find that, that balance? Um, I don't know that I have found the balance, <laughs> Tracy, I'm not sure. Uh, in my, 
In my worst moments, there is no balance whatsoever, and the and the writing often gets neglected. Yes. Uh, when I am really, really present, and when I'm engaged with a project, and I'm in a writing practice, which is a decision, right? It's a, it's a discipline. Um, it's it's actually quite easy. I, I don't know. That sounds like a contradiction, but it's that. If I create a writing practice and I, and I carve out time and I commit to that time and I prioritize it, it becomes a sort of sacred space. And here we are at the end of Jeremy Street opposite the market steps. You know, it's a place that's full of life. You know, it's also a place where the politicians come and they give their speeches to you people. You mean try to mama guy us? Well, if you want to call it that. But I'm just saying it's a place where it has a lot of history. It was also a place where they had a television and people used to come and watch stuff on the television here. You bring me back down memory lane. I remember my grandmother waking us up at about four, five o'clock in the morning so she could come down to the market to purchase fresh fruits and vegetables, her yam, her dashing, to ensure that we had a good broth Saturday morning. Yeah, but that's in the past. Now let's take in a performance by our featured poet, Catherine Atkinson. The saltfish bleeds brine and softens overnight. The next morning, you rise to rinse and remember you dreamed of rain. At the sink, you scrape the scales silver in the white March sun. They stick to your hands like sweethearts. A rasping wind carries the counsel of the mangroves up the valley. You finger through the swollen flesh, feeling for the line of the bone the ridges like prayer beads flake along the grain of the fish into a bowl, expectant as the parched earth. Hands oiled, you score the fig from after four, slip your thumb through the seam to peel the stubborn green casing from the starch. You put it to boil, sweep the sweat from your head. The pan on the fire is fragrant with coconut oil, onion, peppers, and thyme salvaged from the Kawem grudged yard. Fry the fish and serve with fig and cucumber seasoned with cool vinegar. You sit, eat. Bougainvillea dances at your window. You pray for rain. You know, um, I've never heard anyone speak about saltfish the way Catherine did. Imagery, the use of the metaphors and how she describes it is amazing. Yes, it reminds me of Accra. Good Friday, bake Accra. And you know, I have no idea how to make Accra. Really? You do not know how to make Accra? Not a clue. Well, let me, let me show you. Let me... Let's take in our final performance by Catherine Atkinson. There were Sunday mornings when a sea bath felt like a second chance and conversation with my grandpa, a Christian rite, a path through genealogy to redemption. The Nubian princess and the captain, the missionary, planter, duke and slave, outposted outcasts, all charged for some sin of misstep or color deemed just as grave. Amnesiac faith in Wesleyan Dunn is part of my inheritance. But still, I'm haunted by Shango's invocation, which from October thunders through the hills. It calls me home to a different truth that isn't explained by my grandpa's proof. Its absence is what framed its immensity. When at last the winds, as if suddenly shamed, stopped, and in the void, a heavy, wet silence. Everywhere, everything bore the marks of a misused lover. Trees made obsequious by fear, bruised landscapes, 
silent tears and swollen limbs, rivers unable to contain their woes. After the betrayal, the quiet pain of disbelief. The people emerge from their caves and corners to walk the night's cacophony with their eyes and give thanks for answered bathroom floor petitions. In the void of unknowing, our worst fears reside. So we light candles and make noises. We name things as if naming can contain the terror. I baptize you, Tomas, biblical and benign. The images emerge and hang heavily in fortunate living rooms. Everywhere are new ancient paths swathed by a giant we baptized God. Sunday morning feels like Genesis. Out of the silence, a heron's call signals safety and day's first overture begins. A disorientated hummingbird throws itself against a pane of sunlight pasted with leaves and then stunned against its nature is still. First movement. The sweep of the bass broom through water, swish, swish. The twist of towels turned out over buckets, pour, dribble, drip over the banister and out the door. The scrape of leaves from windows. Cutlass-bearing, bare-backed men in rubber boots are stripped of labels, like at Carnival, but this is Kudme. The ringing crack of freedom from fallen trees and branches and the lines of separation that Tomas came to mock. Second movement. Roadside, grilled meat crackles and hisses and warm rum coaxes a thousand stories of survival. Man triumphs against nature. The rivers have reclaimed ancient paths and north is amputated from south. None dare break the code of bravado to say what they all know. I lost God, but last night he came and find me. Third movement. Save for a flickering orange hue, the transistor hums into the darkest night. Valerie Albert Favre's voice keeps rhythm. Yes, caller. Beat, crackle, hiss. I'm from Fonce Jacques, but I live in Castries. Since yesterday, I call in, but up to now, I can't reach my mother. Beat, crackle, hiss. Caller, what's your name? And what's your mother's name? Beat, crackle, hiss. My mother named Marguerite. My name is Christine. Beat, crackle, hiss. Christine, I'm sure your mother is listening and is glad to know you are safe. Beat, crackle, hiss. While we still have no word from the South, do not take that for anything. The authorities are working hard to restore power and communications. Finale. Wary but resistant, like children past their bedtime, Valerie's good night is permission to give up the watch. With heavy limbs and eyes at the most honest time of day, I lost God, but last night, he came and find me. We got voices, yeah, poetry. That poem, Thomas, has such vivid imagery. Another engaging and entertaining performance by the poet. But this performance was special for me. Trekking up the mountain, down the mountain, having that personal connection, understanding where the subject matter of the poetry is coming from. For me, it's knowing where the inspiration is coming from. I can relate to that. See you next week for more Poetry, poetry Live. Live. Voices of the underground. Voices from the underground. Coming on the rebound. The rebound sound. We got voices. Voices.
better than the rest. Don't, don't, don't. We got mm-hmm. voices. We got voices, yeah. We bounce up. Hold you. Hold you. Hold you. Hold you. Don't. Don't, 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 don't,